Good morning and welcome to the Decision Point Trading Room. I am your host, Aaron Swenlin, and I am here with my father, Carl Swenlin, and we're going to get you ready for this trading week. Let's get it started. I'm going to hand it right on over to my dad, but oh, wait, before I do that, let me make sure everybody knows what to do. If you want to attend live, be sure and go to our homepage. There is a picture there for the trading room. Just click on it and then you can come here live and bring your symbol requests for those of you here live. Symbol requests will go in the Q&A box. In the chat room, I welcome you to go in there. We have a moderator, um, Fred, who would love to say hello to all of you and get the conversation started. One great reason to attend live is the chat room. All right, Dad, now I'm going to pass it to you and go right on into that market review. Okay. Here we start with uh, the Altria Group. I had a, I heard someone talking about it being a good stock for yield. And in, you look right here, today it's yielding 8.76%, which is really good. So is this a good one to add to a portfolio? Well, looking at the daily chart, we see it's really looks like a rounded top here, not especially encouraging. We've got the PMO, a, a series of de declining tops. Uh, so let's zoom out a little further. Let's look at the weekly chart. Notice we've got uh, increasing dividends uh, over a three-year period here, of, not actually five years, I'm sorry. And uh, so that is good, but um, still this this doesn't look so hot. The rounded top. Let's let's go back to the monthly and get some real context. Okay, there you have it. A big long-term double top. And that you can see where that round, rounded top is, is fitting in here. And it's likely breaking down. This is this will be an area of uh, of support, um, but it could go lower than that. But um this this is just to demonstrate how you need to use the monthly charts and uh especially if you still might want to engage with this on the short term but if you look at the long term it's not very helpful right now notice that the monthly pmo has crossed down through the uh signal line and that's that's not good all right starting with Let's see what the market's doing right now. Chart didn't update. There we go. Okay, started lower. Now it's getting a little bounce. We've got support right here at that uh, low of, from last week. Uh, we've got a, a lower top here. So we're set up to, to see uh, a, a low beneath a low, which would set it up, would, which would lock it into a falling trend. Let's look at the indicators. These are primary indicators I go to when I'm wondering what might happen next. This is the Swedland Trading Oscillator for breadth and volume. These are short-term indicators. And you notice that as of Friday, they had topped. So at a lower top, showing a weakness uh, in the short term. The intermediate term indicators, the intermediate term breadth momentum and volume momentum. And again, these two to top too, but it's kind of, you can see it's a little bit indecisive in here, pop, popping up and down. But right now, I, I would say the, these indicators point to the downside. Let's look at the dollar um, trending up from this uh, July low and uh, just coming off of the more recent high. Um, so it's down 0.22%. Let's see what gold is doing. 
It should be do, down. I'm sorry, it should be up about that much. Here we go. And it's up 0.36, close enough. So right now it's tracking just the, the opposite of the dollar. For the, the get a b better look at this, I like to look at the weekly chart. Big gold, this was an all time high, an attempt to break out again, and another attempt is still been held down. Right now, we're in a process of consolidation, I'm assuming, and uh, uh, possibly going to see another run towards uh, all-time highs. Crude oil, USO, and this is the weekly chart. And we can see we had the panic low in, when the COVID began. And now uh, it's in a trading range. And I think it's going to, the consensus I would say is that we're going to see higher prices. We're going to see $100 oil. Uh, pretty soon. The uh, Bitcoin chart, uh, we had a pop out of this range um, last month and a breakdown, which has reversed again, and we're still trying to go higher. Uh, in the longer term, uh, it's a lot of resistance in this area. So might be going higher, but I think it's got a lot to fight in the way of overhead resistance. P bonds, this is TLT for the uh, I shares for the 20 plus year treasury bond. Um, it's, um, you see it's rounding here. Let's go up a notch and look at the weekly chart. Not encouraging really, uh, but we do have a potential double bottom here. Interest rates, the 10-year Treasury yield uh, still um, in its in uh, in a rising trend, uh, fighting resistance uh, that we have back here. Now I've been talking about bonds being in a long-term bear market, and I've been doing that for some time now. And I just wanted to show that other people have picked up on that, and not necessarily for what I said, but they've they come to that conclusion. Jim Bianco, Bianco Research, very well-respected technical analyst, and Mohammed Al Iran, who is one of the used to be one of the big shots at Pimco, and they're both uh, saying that the bond market has entered a multi-year bear trend. And I think there's, at this point, there's not any other conclusion you can come to. If you want to read that article, Benzinga.com. <laughs> Looking at the yield array from the 30 year to the one month, uh, you can see it's inverted. Um, shorter term rates are higher and, uh, Longer term rates are lower, but we're getting still everything's still in a rising trend coming off the lows back uh, in uh, last spring. How about the Magnificent Seven? Apple's having a good day for a change. We've got a double bottom here, and uh, we have a top below beneath the top. So that's a setup for a declining trend. Um, my feeling is that it's going to break down through this uh, support uh, sooner than later. Um, but right now, it's rallying back to challenge that possibly. Amazon hit a top, uh, hit an all-time high last. No, I don't know that that's an all-time high. Let me take that back. <clears throat> No, not by a long shot. So, but it did hit a high. We've got a <clears throat> rise and wedge pattern 
it's uh, likely to break down out of that pattern with what we expect with the rising wedge. Okay, Google, rising wedge. And again, we respect it to break down out of it. We do have a saucer around the bottom, saucer with a handle, and it's moved on from there, which is usually what you expect from that uh, type of formation. But right now, we're going to have a pullback, most likely. Made of platforms. Um, a top beneath the top. And then here's uh, the support level, which would uh, we would look to be challenged, uh, you know, maybe a week or two. Again, we have Microsoft with the top beneath the top. And here's the support level. Um, it's moving uh, down towards that support, probably to challenge it. Netflix, top beneath the top. See a pattern developing here in the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> and it's challenging this support right here now. And we've got the PMOs, is PMO cell signal through the signal line, and it's down below the zero line now, which is pure ne negative forces working on it. NVIDIA. Um, here's the rising trend line, and it's come down as basically at today's high, slightly lower from Friday's close. Um, it's still in a rising trend. And then plus one is Tesla, um, top beneath the top. And the rising trend and the, this line here would be uh, of zero, an area of support that it'll have to challenge if it continues down. Uh, okay. What have I missed? I think you actually hit uh, everything. I uh, Gold miners. Do we look at gold miners? I didn't, but I will. <laughs> gold miners, the PMO is rising, which... Uh, you know, explained by the rising, potentially rising trend. We've got a bottom above a bottom. Uh, we now, now we need to see a top above this top to get a, a rising trend. But it's looking encouraging at this point. Is there something you'd like to mention on oh, that? I would just say that, um, you know, I do see a bullish bias on the chart, just uh, mainly because the Silver Cross Index just gave us that shift above the signal line and the participation is really starting to improve in that particular group. So it's looking looking pretty good right now. It just needs to get above some very strong resistance. Yeah, I think gold is definitely going to see better days very soon. And here's a longer, here's a weekly chart um, working off of this low. This is not particularly encouraging. It basically looks like a head and shoulder pattern there. Yes. Uh, you know, in a bull market, head and shoulders patterns are constantly busted. So keep that in mind. I think that I think we're in a bull market now with gold. All right. That does cover it. Let's see if we've got any questions that we need to answer before we you take over. Sounds good. I don't see anything so far. No, no actual questions. We have some requests, which you will get to a little later. Yes, indeed. But we're going to start off with the sectors. Let's go ahead and get to it. First, before I do, I am going to bring you to our website. I'm not doing enough um, ads for our website during the trading room. So I need to do that. This is our blogs and links page. This is where you'll get access to the decision point alert and the weekly wrap, which we do on Fridays, as well as decision point diamonds. 
Decision Point Alert gives you your overall market overview, pretty much what Carl just did. And so you will see pretty much those same charts that we go through um, every day so that you get a really good sense of what those indicators do and how they react and get you a, a better insight into what's going on in the market. Decision Point Diamonds basically is your stock picking newsletter. This is where I do 10 stock picks per week um, with three of them being ETFs on Wednesdays. And they do pretty well, but mainly I just wanna show you what to look for on a good chart, what you should be looking for on those charts before you invest. And that's what Decision Point Diamonds is all about. As a subscriber though, you do get access to our chart list. The DP Alert chart list is pretty much like I, I was mentioning, the same charts that Carl just went over, they're available in there. The under the hood charts are available. Um, they are look like the gold miners chart. They're gonna be the ones like the sectors that we'll look at shortly. And then we have our ETF tracker chart list, which is, gosh, dad, I don't know how many, um, ETFs are on it, but I know it's well over a hundred ETFs that cover all areas of the market. We we have very few areas of the market not covered in that ETF tracker chart list. And then I mentioned if you wanted to get into the room live, you just go to our homepage. And right here, you can see the Decision Point Trading Room. Just register now. That way you can attend live and get your symbol requests look at, looked at and join the chat in the chat room, which does get quite lively. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at the sectors. Here we go. So I'm gonna look at the sectors. We'll see if we need to dip into any of the industry groups. We may or may not. Uh, and then we'll talk about your your uh, questions. If there are any, please add them and go through your symbol requests. All right, XLC, I do see the rising uh, PMO, which is good to see. Um, consumer discretionary was looking good, but you can see the PMO is trying to top right now. Consumer staples starting to see some action with that PMO buy signal. Um, in the in the, the making, it's currently the PMO is equal to its signal line. So that crossover is occurring. The energy sector is still looking pretty good, but that PMO is trying to, it does look a little toppy. We'll have to investigate that on the on the daily chart. Aaron? Yes. Uh, uh, consumer staples uh, does have the 50 crossing down through the 200 uh, EMA. So long term it's it's not a very promising in that oh region. absolutely i totally agree with that um you know the momentum's coming in here probably because it's a defensive area of the market you can see utilities doing quite well uh, of course healthcare is not joining in that and real estate really isn't joining in that but i think these two sectors are at least seeing some um uh people going toward them because the market is looking weak uh, but yes, good point. And then what I will point out as we go through, financials looking pretty good here. I have to say it's one of the more um, bullish charts. We'll look a little closer under the surface, but you can see that scooter value just popping really high there now on financials. XLV Healthcare is getting ready to give us a, a dark cross of the 20 and 50 day EMAs. So that's giving us a bearish bias coming up on this chart. We already see the PMO is in decline, so healthcare not looking too healthy. Uh, industrials, PMO still moving lower. Dark cross has already happened between the 20 and 50. We have materials, It's you can't tell right here, but the 20 and 50 day EMAs are about ready for a negative crossover or a dark cross, as we've been saying. So that's not a good look for materials trying to hold this um, these lows, but we'll look a little more closely at materials later. Um, real estate, like I said, not doing much, stuck beneath the EMAs. Uh, looks like the PMO is above its signal line, so we are on a buy signal. 
but uh, I'm not liking the look here. We'll have to see what the participation looks like under the surface. Definitely the weakest of all of these is technology, in my opinion. I think healthcare with the sort of declining trend that's going on kind of rounded off here, I think that's a problem. But I think technology also looks very poor um, based on this declining trend that's pretty much set. And you can see that PMO now on a new cell signal. Scooter starting to lose a little bit of its um, value, but still not too bad sitting up there at 92.8. But if you're gonna look for some weakness, uh, these are the two areas I would be looking toward and that is healthcare and technology. Utilities, looking pretty good, taking over the position of leadership really from energy, which like I said, while it's still on that rising trend is looking a little bit toppy right now. But utilities really making a nice move. Looks like we're consolidating this rally now above the 50-day EMA. So let's go in and look a little more closely at some of these charts. I want to get to my under the hood ones. Okay, so we'll go through some of these more quickly than others. Com services, the PMO is still rising. We do have a rising trend, but overhead resistance looking pretty strong here for com services. And all of the participation numbers, those um, stocks above their 20, 50, and 200 day EMAs, those participation numbers are below our 50% bullish threshold. Consumer discretionary, notice that new PMO top, and you can see very low participation under the surface, which tells me, you know, we've had this rally but we really haven't seen any kind of um, imp improvement. In fact, we have negative divergences. Notice top beneath a top here, top beneath a top. And over here, we have a price top above a price top. So those are negative divergences that are in play on consumer discretionary. So not the place to be. Got a reverse divergence on the OBV. Yes, it's the same idea here. So we're getting the extra volume. We've made a higher high on the OBV, but we haven't done that with price. And that tells you that price is not following volume. And that's not usually a good, uh, good thing. Consumer staples, as I said, starting to get a little bit more action. PMO is now on the buy signal. And you know the problem though being that we have a declining trend here. I imagine if we drew this in, it might be a falling wedge. No, I don't think so. I don't think no. it's a falling wedge. Um, we had the death cross of the 50 and the 200. So there are a lot of uh, negative factors working here, but I have to say you are seeing a little bit more participation coming in, but still these, are well below our 50% bullish threshold. This does look interesting here though, the silver cross index having a bullish shift above the signal line here. So that's looking interesting and stochastics rising. So kind of a back and forth there, overall overreaching negatives, but some short-term positives. Energy still clicking, but as I said, looking a little bit of a like a little rounded top here. Uh, PMO did surge above the signal line, though. We can see that bottom above the signal line had one back here as well. Silver Cross, all of the participation numbers above our 50% bullish threshold. But notice this contraction on percent stocks above their 20-day EMA. Really seeing quite a pullback there on those readings. Could mean that we are going to get a bit of a pause, maybe a little bit of a decline down to this level of support. So energy, I still think looks good. I'm not too worried about energy positions just yet, mainly because that crude oil chart looks awfully positive. Financials, like I said, I think looking really interesting. You've got the 2050 and 200 day EMAs configured the way they need to be with the fastest on top, slowest on the bottom. PMO buy signal has come in. 
Silver Cross is still in a declining trend, which I'm not as thrilled with. But look at the Golden Cross making this bottom above the signal line and really popping up higher. And then we do have participation above our 50% bullish threshold. You can see the outperformance going on here and you can see stochastics above 80. I'm thinking financials look pretty good going into this week. If you had to pick an area, that'd be probably the area I'd pick. Healthcare is in the decline, as we said, PMO looking ugly. The percentages above their uh, percent stocks above the 20 and 50 and 200 are all below our 50% bullish thresholds. Silver Cross Index in decline, Golden Cross Index in decline, Stochastics topping in negative territory. Not much more that could go bad for healthcare. So we would be expecting a drop beneath that 200 day EMA. Industrials, we've circled here that dark cross that happened on Friday. I believe it was Friday. And you could see PMO in decline. Does look like it wants to turn up right now, but I this is a rounded top for certain. I, I'm really not liking this look. And you can see that we're not getting really much in the way of an expansion and participation. And the, the numbers are all below, well, not all of them, um, percent above their 20 and 50 day EMAs are below our 50% bullish threshold, as is the Silver Cross Index. Long term looking a little healthier, except for the fact that Golden Cross Index is on its way down, holding some pretty decent participation here. But this number, this percentage is lower than the Golden Cross Index. That tells me that this is more than likely going to continue lower because we don't have enough um, participation sitting above the 200-day EMAs. Um, so Cassock's looking pretty interesting here, but overall, I'm not very impressed with industrials. Materials, also struggling here. That dark cross, you can barely see it, but it's there in the thumbnail. That is getting ready to occur. We might see that happen today. And really underneath the surface, kind of mediocre. You know, we have percent stocks above their 200 that are above our 50% bullish threshold, but we're not seeing that across the board. We're seeing lower percentages of stocks above their 20 and 50. That is below the Silver Cross Index percentage. So the Silver Cross Index is going to continue lower and that's not a good look for materials. If gold does start to make a move, I would go back to materials and look closely there. But right now they're just looking a little bit weak. XLRE real estate staying below those moving averages. Unlike financials, they're configured as negatively as possible with the 20 below the 50, below the 200 day EMAs. You can see that participation has expanded somewhat here. And we do have above our bullish 50% threshold stocks above their 20. So that is a good sign. The Silver Cross Index has shifted above its signal line and that's a good sign, stochastic shifting higher. So maybe this defensive sector We'll start to get a little bit of notice, but I don't know if you're going by price action, this doesn't look like a great place to be. The weakest, as I said, in my opinion, is technology testing this long-term rising trend. I suspect this is going to be broken this week. You can see that the support level here at one, that's like 167, and the rising trend, all of those are holding price up right now, but I just don't think that that's going to stick around. We had a new PMO sell signal that arrived on Friday. And look at the decrease in participation here on the stocks above their 20, 50, and 200. Stochastics falling, underperformance against the S&P. If you're looking for a hedge, I think that this isn't a bad place to be having a decent day. So it is trying to bounce off this area of support, but I just don't think it's gonna to manage to hold on to that. All right, and the last one, utilities, which is clicking and doing quite well. 
you can see that the silver cross is above its um its signal line, look at the expansion and participation. This is really what you wanna see if you're in a particular sector. These percentages, at least these two are above our 50% bullish threshold. And look at the expansion of price um, stocks above their 200 day EMA. This is a really nice move, a really nice rally, and it is getting broad as these partic participation numbers continue to increase and improve. So really when you go and look at all of those sectors, I have to say, Technology and healthcare look the weakest and strongest would be the financials and utilities. Those look the strongest in my opinion. Would you go to the top there and give bring us the spy chart? Yes. Thank you. I wanted to point this out. I forgot to. You notice on the Silver Cross Index, we really got a double bottom forming, which is somewhat encouraging. So... Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily to buy it, but be looking out. I mean, this is this is an encouraging sign, but not heavyweight, but definitely a encouraging uh, look. Right. Then you can see we had this happen on that first bottom, nice mm -hmm. rally, but it failed. So we may get a rally out of this, but we need to, you know depending on what the whole market does. I mean, that's, well, this is the market chart, um, but it'll, it'll be interesting to see how this resolves if it can continue moving higher. Uh, right now, it's really bounded to this level because we have the same percentage above their 50-day EMA. So that means we can keep that same percentage on the Silver Cross Index, but given that we're losing some above their 20, this doesn't look particularly good, um, yeah, but we do important. like to see that. Yeah. We definitely like to see that. All right. I think we're pretty much on time to move into our symbols. I'm going to skip going through the industry groups today so that I have plenty of time to cover all of these symbols. Okay. V-I-R-C. Woo, big move here. Um, not sure exactly what that's all about. Um, I would be worried that I was I'd be getting in too late here. Uh, if I own this, I might consider selling some and taking that profit. Um, this is a very low price stock. This is going to be a very high risk move, and it's already made quite a move already. RSI totally overbought, which is which is why I'm worried about this particular jumping in on this rally right now. Everything looks good. I mean, you can see it's outperforming, stochastics looking good, PMO overbought. Um, I would just, this is just something that is suspect to me. I don't like to jump into something that's already made a move to this degree. I think that you probably, it's not, maybe not exhausted, but it's gonna be getting close to being exhausted. Let's look quickly here at the weekly chart. I can find that there. This is really out of character. Although I have to say, you know, Ultimately, we did see the PMO warn us, warn us, give us an attention flag that we might see something good. I don't think that it really presented anything that we'd see that something that good. Um, I'm curious on the monthly chart, like how outrageous is this rally? All right. So it's not completely outrageous. It's not hitting new all time highs. It is getting above the 2017 um, top which is good. So, I mean, there's some good stuff here on the, the longer term charts. I just don't trust this rally. It just, I don't know, dad, do you trust these kinds of things? I just, well, I think it concerned. may be uh, interesting, but I wait for a pullback. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. FFIE. Okay. So the process here for our symbol requests, I'm trying to, to um, have a, an actual process that I go through. It's sometimes I just bounce around the chart because I see this and I see that. But I want to go over the daily chart. We're going to look at a weekly chart. If things look good or if you have a question about when to buy or when to sell, 
that's when I will go to your five minute chart, the five minute candle chick stick chart that will give us our entries and exits. So that's pretty much how we're going to run this. Let me let this dog out. Sorry about that. Of course, it's when I'm the one talking. <laughs> All right. So let's get on with it. Uh, commercial vehicles. Um, I want this in a log scale because I can't really see what's going on. And the minute I have to do that, I already know that I have problems with the chart. All right. So looks, I'm not sure what was going on here. One for eight split, I'm guessing. Or eight for one, one for eight. Like 80, doesn't it? Yeah, 80. Yeah, this... <laughs> This is super low price. This is kind of out of my zone of uh, expertise and analysis. I don't get involved in things like this. I already had heartburn with it because I had to go to a log scale. Um, I I really don't want to comment on this one, to be perfectly honest. It's I have a comment. You do. Uh, but when a, a reverse split is all, always done because the price is so low, there's no other place to go but zero. So it just gives it more room to decline. So whatever's wrong with this company it ain't going to be fixed uh, anytime right. soon. One for 80 is, I don't think yeah. I've ever seen something like that. All right. So let's move on to the next one. XP. All right. Okay, so what I think we're going to see a lot of um, stocks getting ready to hit this overhead resistance level. I have to say I do like the look of this particular one because we have flat tops and rising bottoms, and that is an ascending triangle. So it does indicate that we should get an upside breakout. This big move on high, high volume also suggests to me that we're gonna get a breakout on this one. So I do like the look, you've got the PMO getting ready for the crossover buy signal, RSI is positive, stochastics just now getting above 80. And we're starting to see some, some outperformance here. And in general, this one tends to be a leader within its group. Um, just to go over, this is the group compared to the SPY relative to the SPY. This is the stock relative to the SPY. And this is the stock relative to its industry group. So we want to find one that's doing well against its group. That means we have a leader and we want the group to be doing well. At this point, it's traveling in line, kind of starting to outperform. So not too bad. But I like the look of this daily chart. Let's see what the weekly has in store. The weekly chart has a very overbought PMO, but I don't want to make too many conclusions about overbought and oversold because it is kind of a newish PMO and it does need to kind of de develop its its range. But that is overbought at this point, I'm going to say. Um, RSI is not quite overbought. This looks a little flaggish, so I think that's positive. And the scooter is at the top of that zone, that hot zone is what I like to call it, above 70. The scooter, the stock charts technical rank tells you pretty much in the intermediate and long terms what the outlook is. And right now in the intermediate and long terms, the outlook looks good. So let's go ahead and go to a five minute candlestick chart as far as trading is concerned. So if this one was something you were interested in, I would go to a five minute candlestick chart to time your entry. You want to enter when you've got a PMO on a buy signal and a positive RSI. So your buy point is basically when that happens. Let me get my inspect tool up here. So back here, the PMO had the crossover. The RSI was not positive yet. There's the RSI positive on that crossover. This is when your last buy point was. Now, of course, it's rare you're gonna come to this chart and it's just gonna present you the buy point or the sell point. Sell point? A sell point is when the PMO turns over. I don't need to worry about what's going on with the RSI. If I'm ready to sell a stock, I need an excuse. And a five-minute PMO turning over is plenty of excuse for me to get rid of a stock. So at this point, we are on the buy point. We are on a buy. I do like this flag kind of formation here. I don't know that you're going to get a better buy point today 
based on the PMO, it is trying to turn over a little bit here on this decline. But like I said, this has sort of a flag formation to me. It looks like a pause in the action before it's going to move higher. So I think your buy point is pretty much here. 8 p.m. This is in the financial space, which, as I said earlier, I like the look of. And JP Morgan, I think, looks pretty good right here. Um, while banks isn't my favorite area of financials right now, I think there are some better areas. You can see right down here, the banks are starting to outperform, but in general, I've not been outperforming. So that's why I, I kind of have them lukewarm about this particular industry group, but it does look like it's improving its performance. PMO on the buy signal right now, RSI positive, all of the things going on on this chart I like. We have kind of a little mini bull flag here that suggests we'll get a follow through um, rally. So I like the look of JP Morgan on the daily. What does it look like on the weekly chart? So on the bigger weekly chart, I think that, yeah, that works. I think that works. I'm used to seeing this. So it's it's strange to move it to a bigger, to something bigger. So I'm going to stick with this. I'll uh, adjust as uh, I can later. Um, so anyway, I like the look, except that, that PMO is on the sell signal right now. The um, stock charts technical rank is tipping over before entering the hot zone above 70. So there are a couple of issues that I see on the weekly chart. So this would be something that I would consider in the short term time frame rather than in the intermediate term time frame. So if you wanted to, to take advantage maybe of some strength here in financials. All right, not at a buy point. Certainly, you're going to get a better one at this point with the way price is moving down. The PMO is top. That would have been your sell point back here. Keep an eye out. Looks like the support level, it's at one right now. If we get the reversal off the support level, that could be interesting as a buy point. But based on the look of this PMO, I think you're going to get a much lower buy point and a better entry. IOVA <clears throat> question is, one director recently bought 5 million shares. How do you view big insider events? Hmm. Do you have an opinion on that uh, question? Um, well, you'd have to take it as positive, but I, I can't say that I uh, have studied insider trading uh, at all. Right. And I will agree with that. I would think that if somebody's going to dump some, you know, some big bucks into their company, that that's a good sign. Um, might be trying to hide something too, though. I don't know. Uh, I like this move. It's clearly to me, it must be um, built off of the fact that the executive did buy in um, back into this. It's a low price, so again, I would. Warn, watch your position sizing. It's easy to buy a ton of shares, but you need to be aware that, you know, the percent change could really hurt you. And the percent change, the volatility on these low price stocks can be pretty, uh, pretty busy. Um, I, you know, it's not above the 20 day EMA quite. I, this is one of those buy on a rumor kind of a thing. The technicals look good in that the PMO is turned up and we're getting some high volume here. I just, this is just not my style of investment, I guess is the best I could say. Um, technicals look okay here. Let's look at the weekly chart. I'm not overly impressed right now. Yeah, the weekly chart doesn't look too good. It's really in a, you know, a trading range here. It is at the bottom of that range, so that does make this interesting. Um, I'm lukewarm. I don't think I'm going to look at a five-minute chart. Sorry. Palantir, PLTR. All right. This is in technology where I do sense weakness. And notice that this industry group of software is starting to show relative weakness against the SPY. So be aware of that going in on something like this. 
Um, having a good day, but still lower low, lower high. Rising trends intact. PMO is tipping over. I I don't see this one as a buy. If I owned it, I would hold it. I think your stop might want to be. See, that's too low for a stop, way too low. And if we go to this low, it's still a 9% stop. I don't think I'd want to get involved in this because I couldn't set a stop where I'd really want to. I think a 5% stop might do you okay here on a hold, but it does look like it's ready to pull back some more. So I, I don't know that I would be getting involved with Palantir. I think you could make a case to hold it. Look at the weekly chart. That weekly PMO has just, it's well in the process of giving us a sell signal. I don't know if that was intact on Friday. And you can see the RSI is positive, but that's a pretty ugly looking PMO. Despite a really high scooter here, this does look like it's ready for some pullback. And I can't get too excited about Palantir right here. VNT. All right, nice move here, a big rally today on this low, higher low, so I like that. Um, but lower high over here. Hmm. PMO did flip around here on a whipsaw buy signal. I like that. I like the, the RSI moving positive, stochastics look good. And you can see just of late, seeing a little bit of outperformance here against the S&P. Um, Cupish with handle, cupish, <laughs> cup with handle, uh, making the move out. I think this one looks pretty good, actually. Let's look at the weekly. Weekly chart, not nearly as uh, positive, I would say, as the daily chart. This does look kind of flag-like, but then we had a failure on that breakout to pull it back down. PMO is on a sell signal, still have a good stock charts technical rank. I think I would keep this more in a, a, a shorter term time frame, but it does have some possibilities here. So let's look at the five minute. All right, so we're looking at a PMO that's in decline. So the idea is, right, I wanna get a better buy point. Well, the PMO is declining because the rising trend is now steady. So it's going to start pulling back. It measures momentum. There's no momentum if the if the trend is steady. So you're basically letting up on the gas a little bit here. So you're not gonna get a better buy point today. That's my sense. Because even with the PMO moving down, price is not moving down. So I think you're kind of stuck here. We do see that PMO top beneath the signal line. So if you want to show a little patience and just see if you can't get a bit of a pullback here, you could do that. But I don't know that you're going to get a much better buy point today. BUSH. Gosh. All right. This is a leveraged fund for the oil and gas exploration. Um, I would hang out I, as bullish as I am right now on oil. I would hold off on this because it's leveraged and I don't trust where oil is going to go right now. I think oil is in need of a pause or a pullback. And so that's not the time for me to want to get into a leverage a position. So just know that. Now, if we're talking about a, a USO position, I'd be willing to do that because I could, I could um, su suck up a pullback there. I'm not going to want to do that two times on the way down. So um, be careful with this leveraged one. And you can see that right now the PMO is in decline and the stochastics, while positive, are in decline. This looks a little shaky right now, but I think this is great for your watch list for when we're going to get the turn on crude oil. I'd just be really careful here. BAS. Yeah, I don't think we need to go to the weekly. Baxter. So this is in the healthcare, which, like I said, wasn't looking so great as far as the sector. The group is not doing so well. One of the things I used to talk about with my colleague, Mary Ellen McGonigal, was the fact that really 50% of your stock's movement is 
because of what's happening in the sector in the industry group. So you need to put put that on your side. You want to have both of those things going for you. Right now, both of those things are not going for you. The group, the sector is not doing well and the group is not doing that well. This is in decline. The EMAs are as negatively configured as they can be. Yes, the PMO is turning up, but the RSI is very negative. This would be newish momentum. But with price action, I just don't see this as positive enough to get involved in. It is near a nice low here, but it could move lower before it turns back up. So I'm not so certain I'd want to be involved in this one. And weekly chart tells me the same thing. Okay. T. E. AT and T. Now this looks interesting. The rounded bottom going on, kind of a nice little base. PMO now in positive, positive territory. RSI's positive. Stochastics look good. Uh, relative strength could be better, but you know if you're going to be in this group, AT and T is the group you know the stock to be in. It's just neither of them are performing that well against the S and P. Still better than what it is doing. I like the look of this chart. The twenty is about ready to cross above the fifty day EMA, so. I, I think this looks good, but what's going on on the weekly? I have a feeling it's not great. Well, take that back. Weekly PMO, just getting ready to give us a crossover buy signal. I think you found a good chart here. Let's go to the five minute. Looks like we're at a sell point more so. Well, the PMO is turned back up. Um, I think this isn't a bad buy point based on that PMO turning up above the signal line. I think that it could move, price could move lower here, but I think this would be a pretty solid buy point. Okay, ADP. All right, I don't like price action. Price is in a trading range. Um, it is at the bottom of the range, but not very exciting to me right here. Um, group starting to outperform a little bit. Um, stochastics turning up, but this PMO looks pretty ugly. There's nothing in the PMO to tell me we're gonna get a reversal at this area. Um, I think that we're vulnerable to a breakdown here, if anything else, because of what's going on with the PMO. So I'd be really careful with this one. If we look at a weekly chart, PMO is still rising, but starting to decelerate. I, I don't like the look of this pattern here on price. It almost looks like a rounded top, except for that little spike we had um, earlier. So I would say I, I'm not a fan of this chart. PMO is the biggest problem. Okay, XLY, well, we did that already. We did sectors, uh, yeah. Goldman Sachs, GS. All right. This is an area I do like in the financial area. You can see it's starting to outperform. This one looks great against the group. We have a double bottom that has looks like it's fulfilled its upside target, um, but that's a minimum upside target, so it could certainly go higher. I like the way the 50-day EMA has given us a golden cross and the 20 it's going above the 50-day EMA for a silver cross. Uh, PMO looking good. I like the look of the daily chart. Weekly, we're still in a trading range, but the PMO is giving us a crossover buy signal. It's a little twitchy, but that's okay. Scooter is nearing the hot zone. So I think Goldman Sachs looks pretty good. Five minute chart, and we missed the buy point, which was back here at about 342.17. So we're not too far from that, but the way price is rounding out, if you have time to watch this one, I think you're gonna get a better buy point. If it gets close to this level of support and the PMO wants to turn around or is at least decelerating, I think that might be an interesting buy point there. ADT. .to. Uh, 
ATD, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I have my Q&A on the left. So you read them out and then I can look over there to make surely sure. Okay. Um, stochastics above 80. It's in a nice rising trend. There's not much to not like about it. Um, RSI, even though it's been in this rising trend, the RSI is not, not overbought. PMO rising. PMO is overbought. We have to say that, but everything looks pretty healthy here and consumer staples is starting to see a little love the weekly chart pmos on the buy signal um scooters in positive territory or hot zone above 70 and you can see the rsi is in positive territory so this looks like a winner that's going to keep on winning let's go to the five minute and you can see, mm, well, you you can get a better buy point. Uh, the PMO is turned over. I'd be watching this level, see if you can't get in at that low. Okay, uh, we've got about two minutes. Okay. Um, any favorites on the to the downside with home builders? Why don't Why don't we look at XHB? Good thought. Home builders, I am definitely bearish on, and this chart shows you why. I've been studying some of the home builders and decision point diamonds last week, and they are shorting material. Um, you can see that the PMO has now moved into negative territory for home builders, uh, basically looking pretty ugly. Um, just offhand, Toll Brothers, was one that I didn't like. Um, Prior Diamond, Pulte group, that doesn't look good with the rounded top. Um, those, I think, Meritage Homes, I can't remember what what one that is, Meritage. Fundamentally, home builders are got to be coming under pressure because people don't want to buy at these interest rates. And... Uh, so if they don't have buyers, they don't want to be building. Right. And here's Meritage Homes really looking ugly with the rounded top breaking below this level of support, even with the rally um, looking pretty, pretty bearish to me. Yeah. All right. That concludes the trading room. I'm really uh, pleased to have you all here. We did show you how you could enter and register to be here live. There's also going to be a link in the comments section for the YouTube video when it is posted. So we welcome you to come by and take a look. And of course, go take a look at our website, decisionpoint.com, where we sell the D Decision Point Alert and Decision Point Diamonds. That's all I've got for you today. We wish you good luck and good trading.